Okay. All right, we're going to start here again. All right. So, what I need you to do is I actually need you to open up Paratext 7. So I think everyone said they had Paratext 7 installed. So go ahead and open up Paratext 7. It doesn't matter what version of Paratext 7. Well, hopefully it's at least 7.5, but you know, 7, you know, open up Paratext 7. Open up your Paratext 7. So you can have Paratext 7 and Paratext 8, both of them open at the same time, no problem. They can open up side by side because, again, they're working with different data. So we want to open up Paratext 7. Open up Paratext 7. And um, obviously, it's going to open up different for each of us in terms of what we had working and, and going. I'm going to just make mine full screen here. Okay, so. When I, when I open up Paratext 7, um, we want to have a project that we can migrate. Now, I don't want you at this point to migrate your real data. So in order for us to migrate a project, we need to um, have a project that we can migrate. So we're going to restore a project again, just like we did in 8. Um, I'm going to close all my windows here so I've got nothing on the screen in Paratext 7. So I'm in Paratext 7, and we're going to restore a project. So I'm going to go to File, Restore Project from File. Okay. So I'm in Paratext 7. I'm going to go to File, Restore Project from File. Paratext 7 was a little bit different in that you could restore from the Internet, so you had this secondary level um, thing, but so we're going to restore a file from file. Everybody with me? Okay. Hearing no no's. I'm going to click that, and this file is almost in the same place as the last file I gave you. On your memory stick, on your memory stick, you want to search for your memory stick and go to the Paratext 8 workshop, go to Paratext. Go to Projects to Restore. Go to PT7. So we're going to go, now we're going to go to PT7. So we're in Paratext 7. We're in Paratext 7. We are, can you help make sure that, that you set there? We're in Paratext 7, and we want to use File, Restore from Project. And we're going to then browse looking for the memory stick, going to my Paratext or project Paratext workshop, Paratext, Projects to Restore, PT7. If you've got it, raise your hand. Okay, got I got about 90% of us. Okay, so again, just like we did in eight, double click it. Double click it. And go ahead and click OK. And it's going to restore this project on your computer, which is called ZZ Test 99. That's the project that we're restoring, ZZ Test 99. Now, some of you might have restored ZZ Test 99 in Paratext 8 if you did the wrong files, but ZZ Test 99 is what we're going to restore here. Okay, this project is not shared. Okay, we haven't shared it or anything. It's just a project that we have in Paratext 7. Okay, is it registered? Because Paratext 7 doesn't need registration. Okay, it's just a Paratext 7 project, it's not shared. It's just a Paratext 7 project. Okay. Let's go back to Paratext 8. You don't have to close 7, just go back to 8. And what we want to do 
is a project migration. Project migration is, is actually pretty straightforward, the process. The process of migrating a project is to use file, open project resource, and when it comes up with a list, we need to know what, the, what was the name, what was the name of the project that we were going to migrate? What's the name of the project in 7? ZZ Test 99. So I'm going to go down to the bottom of the list, and there it is, ZZ Test 99. And I click on it, or I double click it, but I click and click OK. Now, I need your attention up here for a minute. Look with me for a second. When you click OK, this is where the migration process starts. And what you're going to see is this message that tells us what's going to happen. I want you to notice a couple things. First of all, this is a non-shared project. Up at the very top it says non-shared project. Non-shared projects do not have to be registered. Okay. You do not have to register a non-shared project. So you could just bring this over to Paratext 8. If you want to register it, you could. And you would register it by simply clicking on the Y register, except that it says it has no history, and if it has no history, there's nothing really to read, you know, it can't be registered for some reason. Okay? So there is no registration button there. If there was a registration button, you would just click register, and it would work. And in this case, the Migrate Now button is black because, because this project is able to be migrated right now. Because it was not shared, you can migrate it right now. So all you'd have to do, don't do it, all you'd have to do is click Migrate Now, and it would bring this project over to 8. Just that easy. Okay? That's all there is to it. So hit Migrate Now. Click Migrate Now, and it will go through the process, and there it is. It's been migrated. Now, what do you notice about the book of Jonah? It doesn't exist. Well, did Jonah exist in Paratext 7? No. Um, so it's not going to exist here. I could create it or import it, but if I want to see what books I've got, I can click on the list, and I can see that I've got the New Testament. So let me go to Matthew. Okay, so there, I've imported, this project has now been migrated to 8. That's all there is to it. That's all there is to it. Very simple. Very simple. The process isn't complicated. What's going to be complicated is figuring out how to get it to everybody and how to, you know, get it there. Okay, the process is just push the button. How long does it take to do this? Well, this project didn't have any history, didn't have any notes, didn't have anything. It migrated in about five seconds. Okay. A project that's got a lot of information, a lot of data, is going to take a little bit longer to, to migrate. So now that we have this project in Paratext 8, we should work on it only in Paratext 8. Is there any way up to, to anything that will stop me if I make a mistake and open that up in Paratext 7 and try to work on it? Thank you, Larry, for that question. I'll pay you, I'll pay you later on um, for that good lead-in. Thank you. Um, I didn't even prompt him to ask that question. 
Okay, the question is, so, so now that I've migrated it, what, what happens now? Well, yes, in reality, you have to decide where you're going to work. Okay. Now, this was a test, so I could, in theory, say, you know what, okay, I've tested it, so I'm going to go ahead and keep working in 7 for another month, and then I'll deal with it. In which case, I should delete this migration, so I'm not tempted to work here. But if I say, these files in Paratext 8 are my files, these are what I'm going to work on now, then I want to go back to Paratext 7, and there's a couple things I can do. Okay. First of all, this is not a shared project. Okay. It's not a shared project, so I can't unshare it. I, I mean, it's not shared. But it does say that it's editable. Okay. And this has to do with our project settings that when a project is editable, you can make it not editable. So if I go to Project, Properties and Settings, under the Advanced tab, there is an option that says Editing Enabled. So if I turn that off and click OK, now I cannot accidentally edit this project because I've turned off editing. Okay, it's been it's been removed. Okay, I've re I removed editing, so I can't accidentally edit. And if I try, if I try to edit it, I get a message that says the project you are viewing is not editable. Okay, maybe a resource or maybe project property settings is not ticked. Okay, so one thing I can do if it's not a shared project is to turn off editing. Even if it was a shared project, I could turn off editing just to shut down editing for everybody. Okay? If it's a shared project, I'd want to go ahead and send and receive it back out to the seven people. I'd also want to, what's that C word? Communicate. communicate. I want to communicate. I want to communicate. Am I communicating? I want to communicate with you that you need to communicate to your team also and say, okay, we've stopped using Paratext 7, you need to make sure you don't use it. Now, the other thing that I might consider, me personally might consider, would be this. I might want to make a backup of my data, because I don't want to get rid of it and then lose it. So I might want to back up my data. When you back up your data, you have to put your name. Put your name, not my name. And you have to say where you're backing it up to. But I might want to back up my data. And now that I've backed up my data, and so I have a, a backup of it I can get back, get back to, now I could probably just delete that project off the computer. And then I don't have to worry about doing it. Personally, I would not do that the moment that I do the migration. I would probably want to wait at least a little bit to make sure that my project is, is all right in eight make sure I'm happy, and then, and then do that process of deleting it, OK? A backup project. Backup project to file, to file so, that, so that I have a backup of it so that I, you know, because I don't want to just delete the project. Even though I've got it in 8, if I'm not, redundancy is a good thing, OK? Especially for those of you who've ever lost data, you know? Uh, redundancy is a good thing. So, even though I've got it in 8, I want to back it up, and then I can delete it. Okay? But again, you've got to communicate with your team. This is where, ideally, we're going to do some of this together. So if a whole team is sitting in the room, we might say, OK, let's all, let's all do this now. Let's make sure editing is disabled and you know, do that. Again, a shared project's a little bit different. Okay? So what I want you to do is go to 8. Go to Paratext 8, click on this project that we just migrated. Click on this project we just migrated. Go to Project, Delete Project. Now, when I click on Delete Project, notice where this project currently is. The only place this project is is on my computer, right? Because I didn't do a send receive to the internet, and I didn't register it. So the only place that I need to delete it is my computer. If I click on delete project from computer only, that's the only choice I actually have. 
Okay, because that's the only place that it exists. So I'm going to go ahead and delete it. And you can delete yours too. Okay, delete the project. Okay, so we unmigrated. We just undid the migration. Okay, we migrated it to 8, and then we just undid it. Okay, let's go back to Paratext 7. This is where you need to be careful that you know which, pro which program you're in. Because if you undelete it, if you delete it in the wrong place, that would be a problem too. Okay, go back to 7. Now, I'm going to turn on editing for a minute again. So, project, properties and settings, advanced, editing enabled. Okay, so editing is enabled. Now, I want to share this project so that we're going to work with a shared project. How do I share a project? What do I do to set up sharing? We go to project, user roles and permissions, and again, it's going to present me with these questions. Am I the main administrator? Yes, all of you all are the main administrator. Do I have the most up-to-date files? Yes, you do. Do you have the registration names? Yes, you do. And do you have, have you received training? Yes. Okay. Okay, so now this project is being shared, but in order to complete the sharing process, when you click OK, you have to do a send receive. Okay, so after you share it, you have to send and receive it. So I want you to send and receive it to the internet. All we're doing is 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 mimicking the process of having a project that that you really have shared. Okay, so on your shared projects, you've already gone through this process. So go ahead and share the ZZ Test 99 project. So we share ZZ Test 99. This puts it out on the internet now. Okay, so now this project's out on the internet, like most of your projects are. Okay, so it's out on the internet, it's ready to go. Well, it's actually taken a while. This is a very small project. Okay, imagine if this were a project that were a gigabyte. 40 people are doing this at the same time, but think about around the world, and again, whether it's 40, if it's 40 people sending a, a, a 100 meg or 100k project versus one person sending a gig, it's going to take a while. Yeah, Pat? You can unclick, you can unclick the other one if you want. Well, it's, that's the, it's not even wanting to do a send receive. Okay, you have, okay, go to file, or go to project, okay. user roles and permissions, okay. and you need to, okay, click OK. Okay, now go to File, Send and Receive Projects. Okay, and there it is. You can uncheck the uncheck oh, the NUT. That's why I have yeah. To have it okay, click OK. okay. Was that yeah. It was there? Okay. okay, so now, now it'll okay. click into do Send and Receive. Okay, so when it finishes, it will tell you that it's done the Send Receive. It's done the Send Receive. You can close that window. Okay, so now you should have a project that you've shared. And so now it should say on the top of the project, it should say your name because you're the administrator of that project, right? Everybody with me? We're all good? Yes, so? Okay, good. Right, let's go back to Paratext 8. Okay, so we're in Paratext 8. Now we're ready to migrate. We're ready to migrate this project. This is now a different project. It's a shared project, right? Okay, so I can go to File. You call it a different project? Well, because I've shared it. It's, I mean, it's the same name, but again, put your, put your imaginary cap on here, and this is a new thing we're doing. Now it's a shared, it's a shared project. Okay, so go to File. Because it's shared, you can actually go two places for it. You can either go to Open Project, or you can go to Send Receive. Either one of those will work because it's a shared project. If it's not shared, it won't show up in the send receive. But if it's send, a shared project, you can go to send receive or open resource, open project resource. So open project resource, and again, I have to know what the name is. So I go down to the bottom, ZZ test. Okay, 
Okay, and now you'll notice that the message has changed. Before it said registration recommended. Now it says registration required. Okay. If you have a project that is shared and you're trying to migrate it to Paratext 8, you have to register it. There's no choice. Notice that the migrate now is gray. Okay? So until I register this, I, I can't do anything. So if I'm not ready to register it, or if I'm not the, the administrator who should register it, then I need to stop and say, okay, I'm going to let somebody else do this. Okay? I'm going to let the other administrator on the project do this, or I'm going to let the consultant do this or something. Okay, so when we get to a project that's shared, you have to register it in order to migrate it. If it's not shared, you can migrate it right away and then register it some other time. But if it's shared, you have to register. So you guys know how to register, so click on register online. Well, it doesn't matter whether it's by myself or with other people. If I have gone through the process of sending and receiving to the internet or to the memory stick, if I've, if I've gone through that process of user roles and permissions to set up user roles and permissions, I've shared it. Okay? That's what sharing means. If I've gone through that process, whether I'm the only one on it, I've still shared it. Okay? So go to register online. When you click on register online, it's going to again bring you to this same website that we used when we were looking at the project before. And so you can go through and fill in the information. Again, you need to fill in everything that has an asterisk, needs to be filled in. The key here is this is a test project, so we're going to keep it as a test project, but you can select the scope. This is just a New Testament. The translation type is new. The country is U.S. Yes, sir. Did you check the show seven projects? Okay. So whether you're in send receive or you're in open project, you have to make sure that you show the seven seven Paratech seven projects. Okay. Now it'll show up. ZZ test. It's going to be. Yep. So and again, when I'm doing these tests for myself, and you can. You can feel free to play with this some, but when I'm doing these tests for myself, I always put ZZ on there so all these are showing up at the bottom. It's just easy for me to find them. Okay, the status of this is active, and it's a test project, and I agree, and register. So go ahead and register the project. You have to do that. When you finish registering it, it's going to take you back to that same dialog in Paratext 8. Once you've, once you've finished registering, you're going to go back to Paratext 8, and you're going to get that same dialog that now is going to show you that you've actually finished the registration, and it's going to show that the project is registered after it gets the available registrations. Okay, so now you can go back to Paratext 8. Just go back to Paratext 8. So when it, when it, in the, in the website, when it finished, this, this is where things are, things are kind of different. Because in Paratext 7, you were never going back and forth to this registry website. In Paratext 8, you go back and forth to the website. And you're, you're there, and then you're back in Paratext. Okay, so you kind of have to keep track of where you're at. Once I, have, once I have got the registration in 8, notice now that I have something very similar to 7. In order to migrate this, just like I did in 7, I have to answer some questions. Okay? And so the questions, I am the team member who's been selected to do this process for the whole team. Okay? Again, who can migrate? Admin and consultant. But there could be five administrators and ten consultants on a project. Okay? So the team has to decide who's going to do this. 
okay? And you have to say, I am the one that the team has agreed to, to do this. So you got to click that if you are, in fact, the one the team has chosen. Okay, our team understands that Paratext 8 project will be the authoritative copy of the project. So do, do you all understand that once we move this to 8, 8 is where we're going to work? You all understand that, right? Okay, so we've got to make sure that's true. The whole team has to understand that once we move this, this is where we're working. Okay, at this point, have all team members stopped editing Paratex 7? Yeah, everybody stopped editing Paratex 7. Okay, so we agree. <laughs> if Dean is still out in the village, sick in bed, I can't answer yes, so in that case I can't migrate. Okay. Now again, here's where we here's where we're gonna have to make that decision. Are we gonna abandon him in seven right now? So if we choose to abandon him, we say Then from from my perspective, I'm abandoning him and I'm gonna say yes. We're gonna we're gonna get his data later because I can't get it now. I don't think that's the best scenario. That's not the ideal. Okay? But Dean isn't able to be with us, so yes, we've got everybody. We're abandoning him. That's life. That's life. And, and life says sometimes you abandon Dean. Okay, all team members, all team members have done a final send-receive of their changes. Is that true? Has everybody done in seven? Did everybody do a final send-receive? Okay, here's, here's the thing. Is Paratext doesn't really have a way of, of saying that the others have done one, but the last question is, this computer has received those changes. Okay, if, if I click this, then migrate becomes black, and I can actually do the migration. Now, the reality is that if, if there are changes on my computer that haven't been sent yet, Paratext, Paratext is going to pop up a message that says, wait a minute, you got changes in Paratext 7 that haven't been dealt with. Paratext knows that on my computer. Okay? It also knows the server, the server also knows that I haven't received changes. Okay? So if I haven't done these things, then Paratext is going to pop up. But you still should, what's the word? Communicate. communicate. You still need to communicate. One of the things that happens when we're playing like this is we tend to click really quick and just go through. But when you do this for real with your data, you need to communicate. You need to make sure that everybody does the send receive, that that send receive goes around the entire team, okay? that everybody gets the data. Everybody does the send receive. And then this computer that I'm working on right here doing the migration, it has received all those changes. Reality of send receive is this. If all of us hit send receive at the same time, we all boom, I'm going to get some of the changes, but I'm not going to get all the changes. So I need for you all to do your send receive, okay, and I need to wait. And then I do my send receive. When I do a send receive, a window pops up and it says, okay, you got changes from. Da, 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 da. I need to look at that. And if I don't get changes from Dean, then I need to Skype him and say, hey, Dean, did you do a send receive? Oh, oh yeah, I was going to do that after lunch. Okay. Do it now, please, so I can get to work. Okay. If he hasn't made any changes, if he hasn't made any changes then it's not going to matter. Okay. But, but, but here's the reality. There are so many times when I hear somebody say, oh, no, I didn't do anything. I didn't change anything. So you do a send and receive. Well, what about, what about the, oh, I did those last week. Well, okay, well, you still have to send and receive them. You know, I mean, you know, you should be doing a send and receive every day. But, you know, so, again, you want to just make sure. Please do it. I did send and receive five times. Didn't you get them? Well, where did you send and receive? Well, I sent to the memory stick. No. Well, how am I going to get them on the memory stick? <laughs> if you've got the memory stick, you didn't give me the memory stick. Okay. If you do a send receive to the memory stick, give me the memory stick, then I've got it, okay? So, again, it's not just a matter of saying, yes, I did a send receive, but did that, those send receives get to me? Okay, now, if the person is the observer in the project, does it really matter that we get 
it's not going to matter from them because you're not getting any changes from them. So you don't need to worry about getting changes from an observer. And in fact, you might want to even just say, you know what, we're going to take the observers off the project for the migration process, and then when we, after we migrate, we'll put back on the ones we want. Okay. This, again, is the time even to clean up who's on the project, you know, because you could say, okay, let's take these people off the project. This guy has not been a consultant on the project for five years. Let's go ahead and take him off the project. We don't worry about him. Okay. Um, so, again, we're kind of cleaning, cleaning up some. But, it, so, but that was on the seven side. That was on the seven side that we did that. Okay. So, but now, I'm, in eight, I'm having to answer these questions. Have all these things happened? Once they've all happened, then I hit migrate now and go ahead and hit migrate now and again paratext is going to go out and it's going to do this migration how long will it take again it depends on how much data is there how many notes how many how much history um, but paratext does two things one it brings the data over and two it actually does a send receive to the server so this process of migration is actually putting the data on the server at the same time. So that's one of the reasons why it takes a fairly long time to do this. Again, if we've got a big project, got a big project, then it's going to take a while to complete this migration process. These are small projects, but all of us are hitting the server at the same time. Right. If we were sharing this project among ourselves, so if all of us were on, on the same project, then only one of us would do the migration. But in reality, this is, these are all individual projects. They just happen to have the same name. In other words, I could create a project called MP1, and you could create a project called MP1. They're not the same project. Okay? The fact that they have the same name, they could be... You know, this is why naming is important, because if you name your project, you know, N -U -N 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 -T for, you know, Numa New Testament, well, somebody else may call theirs the, the, the Nigeria New Testament, and they may be NNT, and somebody else may call theirs the, the Nevada New Testament, so it's NNT, okay? So we could have a whole bunch of projects that are called NNT, but they're not the same project, okay? This is where each project has what's called a GUID which is a special code that identifies that project. And we saw this earlier before you came, Larry, but all of us were working with projects, but they all have different GUIDs because, because they're different, different. Okay, so now this project has finished the migration. We don't have an orange message. We've got a green message. Woohoo! I'm not sure why green is so much better than orange. I think, you know, it's just color discrimination. This project has been successfully migrated to the PT8 data format. Do not edit the PT7 project. Edits made in the PT7 project will not appear in the PT8 project. So again, if somebody works in the PT7 project, it's not going to appear. Now that doesn't mean you can't bring it in. Okay? Doesn't mean you can't bring it into PT8, but it will not appear here. So again, just like we did a minute ago, we now might want to go back to Paratext 7 and in Paratext 7, we might want to make it non-editable, except this is a shared project. So one of the things we might want to do before we make it not editable is we might want to go to user roles and permissions, and we might want to take everybody else off the project. Okay? We might want to remove everybody or make them an observer. Okay? We might want to just make them an observer on the project so nobody else can do anything in this project. Okay? If you want to, you know, if you wanted to keep it for whatever reason, you know, we want to edit it so that it's not going to be editable. In seven, I'd have to do a send receive, but how would the team know to do a send receive in seven? I'd have to communicate. communicate. I love that word. Communicate. Okay. So you want to, again, you got to keep communicating. So you want to make sure that everybody gets this message because if, if Dean, sorry, Dean, you're just too easy to pick on today. <laughs> You're the pick-on guy. Um, Jim, Jim, Jim's glowering at me, so I don't want to pick on him because he, he looks mean. Okay, so, so if, if Dean doesn't get the message and he just keeps merrily working away thinking, oh, okay, I'm going to you know, work on the problem. Again, that could cause problems for us because we've now, everybody's shifted to eight and Dean's still doing that. We don't want that. 
in general, we don't want that. Okay? We don't want somebody working in, in seven while the rest of us are working in eight. We want to try to get everybody over. Extreme situations may occur where we say, okay, Dean did it, fine, we'll get his data in. Okay? But what we can't get easily are his notes, the word list, biblical terms, all those things. If Dean's working on that stuff in seven and we're in eight, that stuff's kind of lost. Mm -hmm. uh, do, it, do you need to do one before the other? Yeah. Do, yeah, good do question. The first? Do the vernacular. One of the things, okay, and, and so with, with projects, well, part of it depends on how, you, how the project is done. In, in paratext, you've got back translations that are real back translations that are linked to a front. You've got daughter translations that are linked to a front. You've got transliterations that are linked to the front. And in 7.6, they introduced an, what's called an auxiliary project that's also linked. So anytime you have a project that's linked to another project with a direct link in paratext, that gets its registration from the vernacular. So when we register this project, any project that's linked to it gets its registration as well. So you want to you wanna migrate it and then you do have to migrate the back translation. But you won't have to register. You just migrate it. Okay? But you do have to migrate. It doesn't, it doesn't come over automatically. Okay? You don't want to migrate the back translation first because then it gets kind of confused as to you know, where the front is and stuff. Now, what about a front translation that's not linked to any one language, but instead to a whole cluster or something like that? Well, so, but again, it's the same thing. It's the front, mm -hmm. so bring it first. And then all the other ones are linked to it, so they'll get their registrations. No, I'm saying, where, where will the front translation get? Like, we have a, 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 a front translation in Swahili that is tailored to some of the issues that it's going right. to face. So is that a project that will need to be registered on its own, or does it get its registration from something else? Okay, but in Paratext 7, is it linked off of anything, or is it just a, it's just a vernacular project, but is, is, it, is it shared? Okay, so if it's shared, it's a standard project, it's shared, it has to be migrated with a registration. So you have to register it and migrate it. So it's going to be registered and migrated, it's just going to be by itself. Then you're going to register the, then you're going to migrate the vernacular and it, register it and migrate it. You know, so that, that front is, is going to be brought over as a separate shared project. So, so for instance, we just, let's, if this is our front, we just migrated it. And then now we would do our vernaculars, and each one of them would be be brought over too. Yep. Uh, I'm wondering, does Paratex have a way of, of seeing that a uh, certain person hasn't uh, signed in and looked at that project for a long time? Is there any kind of history on people that come in to look at a project? Well, when you say look at a project, um, I don't think Paratex keeps track of looking. It does keep track of changes. So if you make it, if you do, if you do anything, observers, it's not going to know. Observers, it doesn't keep track of when they, they get in that I'm aware of. I don't think so. I don't think so. So observers, it doesn't, doesn't know whether someone's looked at this in 10 years. Look at people where they've even opened Paratex for a long time? Well, if you are on the internet, if you are on the internet, then Paratex knows when the last time you used Paratext is. So if I go to the database, I can look and see, okay, you opened your Paratext 7 today. Okay. But if you aren't on the internet, you know, so Dean, who's out there six months away, he could be using Paratext every day. I had no idea. You know. This is one of the things that Paratext also, when you do changes and you send and receive them, in Paratext it says, okay, um, well, it's not showing this is user open permissions. But if I do a send and receive, let me, let me close this. If I look at recent changes, when I look at recent changes, um, which is what I would see, when I do a send receive normally, it brings up that box that says these are the changes that have been made. It tells me what version 
I'm running. Now it doesn't tell me when I accessed it, although obviously I accessed it today. You know, it tells me the date, actually. It says I accessed it 2017.05.02. So if I'm using the internet doing this, then I'm going to see it. If I'm using a memory stick with you, then you would see it here. Okay? And it would tell me what version, it tells you what version of Paratext you're running, as well as, you know, the date you worked on it. Okay. Some other questions? Are we, are we scratching the itches, or are we just totally covered in poison ivy right now? Larry? Yeah, I noticed that too, actually. <laughs> I didn't want to mention that. <laughs> I'm not sure what was going on there, that it came back on. Uh, it may be that because we've shared it, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But certainly something to, to keep an eye on. Um, okay, so, yes, Pat. Uh, when I go to 7.5, mm -hmm. it will say it's currently Okay. This significant update is recommended. Would you like to open your browser to the download site? What happens if I say yes? Okay. So, this is a good question, Pat. Pat is bringing up this question of that message that comes up in Paratext 7.5 and it came up in 7.6 for a bit too. Um, that was a m sort of a mistake. <laughs> here's, here's what happened. Here's what happened. Years ago, when the developers were creating Paratext 7.5, they put some code in there that would bring up a message that said, we've updated Paratext to a new version, you should get it. And that's a good idea. But they had in mind that that was going to be 7.6, 7.7, 7.8, and those weren't going to be major transitions where you're actually having to migrate your data and stuff. They, they were expecting it to be you know, those versions. When 8 came out, there was an update to 8, and the, that triggered that message in the system. So all of a sudden, everybody in the world got this message that said, you know, 8's come out, click on it. If you click yes, all it's going to do is take you to the Paratext registration page. Okay? No big deal. You don't have to register, but that's what it's going to do. They've, what they've done is they've added updates to Paratext 7.5. So if you click no, Paratext 7.5 should open, and it will download an update, an automatic update to 7.5 or 7.6. And once that update runs, then, then it should not, you shouldn't see that message. You may see the message one more time because it has to open. But once it runs, then that message will stop showing up. Okay? But they kind of got, they, they, the gun caught us there, and so we, we, we got beyond. So hopefully that's been fixed, but you, you're still seeing it because you haven't opened 7.5 in a while, and it hasn't updated. So once it updates, then it'll well, it's process. It's done that a couple times during the day today. Right. So hopefully it should update. Now, if you've got updates turned off, then it won't. But you know, so can you check? It wouldn't automatically go from 7.5 version to 7.6. It will never go. It will never go to a new version, a new major version. So 7.5 to 7.6, it won't do it automatically. 8. So, so that's for 8, you have to go download the new version and, and install it, okay? Um, one difference between 7.7 7 and 8 is that because they're totally separate versions, you can actually run both versions on your computer. When you went from 7.4 to 7.5, for instance, 7.5 overwrote 7.4, and so you now just had 7.5. 7.6 7 was a beta so it actually installed itself next to 7.5. So you could have 7.5 and 7.6, both. But you could. 7.6 is still running on 7.5. It's running on the same data. It's running on the same data, but you could have both of the programs. They're they're separate. Right. You you can. It just gives an error. It gives a warning message. But they're running on the same data. So you don't want to run 7.5 and 7.6 at the same time because they're using the same data. But eight is using different data. So as a consultant, you can have 7.5 open, work on this data, 8 open, work on this data. Okay? And you're probably going to have to do that. Okay? Almost guaranteed, if you've got more than one project, you're probably going to have to work on 
both programs at some point. Unless you can convince all of your teams to come together in one big happy meeting and do it. So you've got cluster projects, and so you know the ideal thing would be to say to that cluster, okay, everybody, let's all get this all cluster. We're going to meet at the hotel for the weekend. We're all going to do this this weekend. You can all go yeah. swimming, and I'll do this. You go swimming, and I'm going to have these three guys are going to help me. I'm going to have Dean help me because he's done this and he knows how to do it. You know, we'll be all good to go. We'll be all good to go. But but you know, bringing the team together at one time would be the ideal. Okay, that's the ideal. <laughs> yes? So once we migrate a project to eight, and then we go back to seven, uh, seven six, and um, take out other users, will that affect, you know, when we do ascend and receive again? The team members will do ascend and receive on seven six, so they'll, their name will take over the project. Will that affect on the project on eight? Nope, because, because you know, again, the send receive on seven, and the send receive on eight are totally separate. Okay, so once you've migrated it to eight, you've now created a new send receive over here that's totally separate from the send receive that was done in seven. Okay, so I, I can see a scenario where people are, are kind of groggy. They open up their paratext and they think on, they're on one version, but they're really on another one. So uh, there's nothing that warns them. Uh, this project is already in eight. What are you doing in seven? Right. There is none. No. Okay. You're absolutely right. There's nothing that warns them that, that this has been transferred in. And again, the, the challenge is that it, I'm not sure what the challenge is. I sounded good, but I was going to say something. With, Right, and so, so there's some other so possibilities. The one so, well, they actually did change it to look a little different, but it's not a lot different. Yeah. But yes, you could go get rid of the icon, get rid of the shortcut so that it doesn't come up, so that you know it's not visible. That at least would, would keep people from accidentally clicking into it. Um, you know, you could uninstall Paratext 7. You know, I mean, if you've got if you've got some team members who you're just concerned that they just you know they're just not really gonna be confident you know you're you're not confident that they're gonna be you know comfortable with having both pro just delete Paratex seven from their computer once they're using Paratex eight all the files are there you know that that's fine you don't need Paratex seven anymore. You can change the desktop too in Paratex so it comes up blank. You can do all sorts yeah you can do all sorts of things. Yeah, you can do all sorts of things, but, but again, the question is, do you know what what's going to work for your team? And I can't say this is going to be the the solution for each team. I would say that I probably don't want to do that the moment that I migrate. But again, if if we're only together today, if this is our day, this is this is it. After today, all of you are going back to the village, and I'm not going to have any more opportunity to work with you. Then I might want to go ahead and say, let's delete Paratex 7 from our computers. We've got 8 installed. Everybody's got the project. You got the project. You got your resources. You got all the projects. You know, there's three projects that we're working on because you got the back translation and you got, you know, the other print translation, the, the front. We've got, we've got everything. We're all set. Okay, fine. Let's delete Paratex 7. Sign on the dotted line. Give me your $300. Let's delete Paratex 7 and then you, you can go. Paratext 7 and Paratext 8 are totally separate. Okay? Totally separate. Now, let me also say this that when you uninstall Paratext 7, it doesn't do anything with your Paratext 7 project files. So if I still have Paratext 7 here, I've got this, these projects. I'm in, I'm in Paratext 7 right now. I'm in Paratext 7. If I were to uninstall Paratext 7 right now, my files would still exist on the computer. Okay. Physically, they're there. But I wouldn't, ex I wouldn't access them because I wouldn't have Paratex 7 to get into it. Okay. But you haven't lost your NIV Bible or any of those other resources yet? Not that in, if, but if they were in 7, 
if they were in seven, then I saw them in seven. I, I'm not in, if, I, if I delete seven, I'm not going to see them anymore. Okay? Now, this is a good question because there are a few resources yet that are not available in eight. Okay? Like the New Living, for instance, is not available to us in eight. And, the, and NET. And there's, a, there's several that are not available to us. Okay? They're not available to us. So, Yeah. Okay. Quit breaking your computer. Okay, so um, so one thing that you could do again is if you if you uninstall your project. Okay, so I let's say I uninstalled it, so the project doesn't exist. All I've got now are resources here. I could, in theory, set these two projects up like this, set these two windows up. So I have Paratext 8, Paratext 7, and I say File, Open Resource, and I open up my NET. So there I've got my nice NET resource, and over here I'm going to set this window. I'm stacking them, so I've got, the, I've got these, these two resources. Watch what happens when I go to Luke here. Nothing. That's disappointing. But if I turn this on so it scrolls with compatible text, and I turn this on so it scrolls with compatible text, now if I change to John my Paratext 7 changes to John. So now in theory, at least for the moment, until, until the NET becomes available, I could use the NET from 7 to scroll with my Paratext 8 projects, if I needed to do that, okay, if it's critical. Again, my encouragement would be don't use Paratext 7 if you can avoid it, because it's going to be confusing for in most situations to have both of them open. Because you go, oh, let me go open the project. Oh, wait a minute, there, you know. So, but, but it's an option. Did you get it or not? No, okay. Questions? Question. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, just, okay, so if you're the person that's chosen to do the migration. The chosen, yes. The chosen. <laughs> okay, and you decided that you were going to take all the people off you know, take in the user world's permissions, take them off the project. Okay, why, the why would I, why did I decide that? Before, I mean after I migrated it? No, before, oh, so that they would stop work and everybody is not going to lose work. Okay, I probably am not going to take them off until after I migrate it. Okay, in other words, I'm going to migrate it so that they're all on the project in eight, and then I can go back to seven and take them off the project. In some ways, it wouldn't matter. I mean, if I've only got three people, I could take them off in seven, do send receives, everybody sends receives, then I could migrate to eight, and then I could add those people in eight. Okay? I could do that. But that means I, that means I have to do multiple steps, whereas if I migrate it, then they're going to be there in eight. Okay, so now they're there in eight, and I just go back to seven and take them off after I've done the migration. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Other questions? Sorry. Dave? I'm just about to the point of actually migrating the project. Okay. I said, oh, wait, are we going to talk about this more? Or... <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it, it looks like it's not a problem because on these two projects, there are no other users. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. If, if you are the only user on the project, or there's two of you, and, and you agree with that person that, let's do this, there's no problem with doing the migration right now. Absolutely no. Okay? No problem. I'm not thinking about those situations. I'm thinking about these cluster project teams that we don't need to say to the cluster project, okay, you've got to do it tomorrow. I've got projects on my computer 
that are projects that are not shared. They're, they're projects that I typeset years ago that I keep on my computer as a resource. They're resources for me, essentially. Okay. Well, I could go ahead and migrate those over. They're not shared projects. They're just there. I could migrate them. I don't even need to register them. Okay. Because I'm not, I'm not going to print them. I'm not going to, you know, do things with them. Because again, remember, if I don't register it, I can't send and receive via the internet. I can't, um, I can't do print with it. I can't do interlinearizer with it. I don't care about that. I just want to have them there so I can look at them occasionally. I can go ahead and migrate those. Is it a good idea to have everybody have Paratext 8 before the migration is done? Yeah. Yeah, I, I like that. I mean, ultimately, it, it, it doesn't really matter. It, 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 it's, not like, it's not like, you know, you should wait until I've migrated it and then install 8. We, all of you have 8 installed now. Okay? It might be months before you migrate. It's no problem. Yeah, it's no problem. Um, Paratext 8 is released. Updates are coming out periodically. Okay. So ideally, probably that's really a good solution, is get Paratext 8 on when you can. Part of it is going to be, again, timing and sequence of everything. Um, because if, if Dean is, again, I'll pick on Dean. Dean's out in, the, out in the jungle out there, and he can't get Paratext 8 right now. So is it a problem for him to wait until he comes in and we do the migration and he installs 8? No, that's fine. But if he can get Paratext 8 installed before he comes in, that, that's even better. That's good. If, if somebody on the team is a consultant and they're putting 8 on their computer, is Paratext going to want to migrate at that point? No. When you, the fact that you put Paratext 8 on the computer, it's not going to migrate. Now, let me, having said that, let me again point you to this send receive. If I'm in eight, I'm going to make this big so I can see it. If I'm in eight and I go to file send receive, I have to be careful because right now, right at this particular moment, all I see are my Paratext 8 projects. But if I happen to click this button down here, show Paratext 7, then I'm going to also see any Paratext 7 projects that are available. And so I might be tempted accidentally to say, oh, I want to send that project too. And if I click it, then it's going to try to migrate it. Okay? Now, I don't have to migrate it. Okay? I can click Migrate Later. Okay? But it's going to try to if I check it. So, so you have to be a little bit careful. It's not automatic. It's, it's the fact that I install 8, it's not going to automatically say, oh, let's do this. And I don't think the developers are going to put a new feature in next month that says, OK, let's just do this. Let's just make everybody do it. Let's just migrate all the projects. Not going to happen. Not going to be automatic. It's not going to be automatic. Okay? But it could be accidental if you're not careful and reading what's there. So you know, I don't actually have any projects that are now shared and not registered. But I would see the same thing if I looked at file open projects. I've got some projects that are available. So like here's a project that is a version 7 unregistered. And if I, if I was looking at this and said, oh, yeah, I, I want to open that project. Because I remember I, I used to work on that project one time. I want to open it. When I try to open it, When I try to open it, it's going to take me to this. And at this point right here, this should, flag should be going off in my head. Say, oh, wait a minute. This is not a Paratext 8 project. This is a Paratext 7 project that needs to be migrated. Do I want to do this? And if, if I go and click, oh, sure, migrate now, then it's going to migrate it. Oh, darn, I just migrated that project. Okay, is there a problem? I can what? Unregister. Or 
this, is, this, was, this was an unregistered, unshared project, right? It wasn't shared because it let me bring it. Okay, it's unshared. So what do I do? I just, I just say, I don't want this project anymore. And I say, okay, let me just go delete this project. Okay, notice again, I only have one choice because it only exists on my computer. Now, if I delete it, is it deleting it from Paratex 7? No. So all I'm doing is getting it off. So no problem, no foul. The problem would occur if I said, oh, let me start editing this. And I, and I went and I made a whole bunch of changes here. And then I said, oh, no, this was supposed to be done in Paratex 7. Let me go back to Paratex 7. And you start making a bunch of changes there. And so you get a bunch of changes in there and a bunch of changes in here. And, oh, wait a minute, where am I working? What am I, now, now we start getting into a problem, okay? So, again, we want to be careful with that, not working two places. We, we want to avoid working two places. Okay, time for the wave. Good. Yeah, a question. Can I take uh, Paratex 8 on a thumb drive out to a village and put it on and update some worker's computer out there if he doesn't have that internet access? The thumb drive that I gave you, did it have Paratex 8 install files on it? Can you take that memory stick out to somebody? Yeah. There you go. There's the answer. Well, you would send and receive. You would send and receive. Right. So, so again, if I look at the if I look at the files here, if I look at the files on the E drive, you'll notice that I've got a couple things. One is I've got the Paratext Workshop folder that I gave you that had the files. I also have a shared Paratext 8 project because I did a send receive to the memory stick and when it shared it created this single folder for that project. Okay, There's the repository. That's what a repository looks like. Okay, Don't mess with it. Do not touch the files. Do not pass go. Do not touch this because if you touch this you will probably corrupt it and then when you take it to somebody, they won't be able to use it. So do not, do not, do not, do not, do not, do not, do not. That should be a song in there somewhere. Um, do not mess with this shared Paratext project folder. Okay? Unless Steve White, as the technician, says, please go here and do. But Steve's probably not going to tell you to go to the HG folder and do something. Don't mess with this folder. This is where your project lives if you're trying to share it with somebody else. And so if you mess with this, you're going to corrupt it, and then it won't work. Okay? So don't mess with that file. Here's also the zip file. When I created a backup and I sent my backup to this folder, this is the backup of the project. Okay? So, yeah. This is a question having to do with resources. Uh, what are the differences in the resources with 7 and 8? Yes. How's that? So it's just going to keep on adding more and more resources. That's the goal. But the, the okay, the, the difference between the the well, let, let me let me take a second and, and talk about resources. In Paratext 7, back years ago, the UBS signed agreements with various Bible organizations to use their resources. Many of those agreements have expired. Okay? This is one reason why we have to deal with these whole resources right now. So in some cases, those, those resources, have, we don't have permissions in the same way to use them. So this is where we're going with getting re-registered and getting permission to use them. This is also why, in some cases, we don't have some of those resources yet, because the permissions haven't been re-established. And as permissions are re-established, then those resources will be available. The way the permissions work is that a, a resource owner who has a, a, a 
book card for the, the digital Bible library would say, okay, we have, we have a resource called the RVR 60, the Reign of Valetta 60, and we're going to share that with anybody who's in these organizations. And so they do that, and now that becomes available, that becomes available to, to everybody. But if they say it's only going to be available to people who are in XYZ organization, if you're in seed company, then you can use it, but if you're in SIL, sorry, then only seed company people would see it. So even though it's been made available, it's only made available to that organization. Now, one of the things that happens is the DBL, in theory, could have every Bible that's ever been published in the world as people start sharing those with the Digital Bible Library. And in theory, all those could be available to us as resources. It really depends on the owners of the resources as to whether they want that to happen or not. Yeah, we have, uh, I did a little study on what the resources are in eight. It's interesting. There's almost 300 resources here, and 183 of them are indigenous Bible. Right. And many of them from Mexico and other places where those... Right. And that's just the nature, that's the way this process is working, that it's through the organization and through the Digital Bible Library that the resources are available. Okay. Other questions there? Okay, so we're almost done for the day. Okay, so what could go wrong? Well, Kate's just having too much fun. That's all there is to it. What could go wrong? Okay, we undid a migration. We shared a migration. And we undid a shared migration. What could go wrong? Well, most of the time, nothing's going to go wrong. Okay, we, we really, the, the, the process has been tested, you know, you know, we've gone through this, but where things go wrong is generally related to somehow we've done something we're not supposed to. So if two people try to register and migrate the project at the same time, you know, we could run into to issues. We didn't talk about the way to migrate offline, but you actually can migrate offline. Okay, so if you have no internet access, you can actually say, I want to migrate. And, and you, you just aren't going to be registered. And so again, you're going to miss out those features of registration. So when you get to a place where you can register, then you would need to, to do that. But in theory, you can register, you can migrate it offline. Um, so you can get it over to eight, you can work, if, with the assumption, again, that everybody is in that kind of condition. Um, we've run into issues where people have tried to change the project, and so they've changed the name, for instance, of the, the front translation and migrated it, and then they've tried to do the back translation, forgetting that they didn't change the linking of the back translation, so it's linked to the new project, and things get all jumbled, okay? Um, linkage of projects where you've got a front and a back where they're linked together can, can cause problems because you've actually got to migrate them both. Problems where maybe you migrate the back translation or try to migrate the back translation first, you know, things can get messed up. The system should catch most of that and we've tried to continue adding features into Paratext that will catch that. But the developers are, are often want to say that 
you know, translators can find a million ways to do something that the developers never considered. You know, the developers try to guess how, how might somebody do something and nobody ever thought that a translator would try to stick the computer up on the cliff and migrate it um, by throwing it off the, the mountain and, and, and it didn't migrate well. Um, okay, what could go wrong? Well, I mean, nothing could go wrong, but you, you can always have problems. Um, one of the things that we ran into not long ago was the fact that there was a project that had gotten extra what are called SSF files. The SSF are the, are the settings. And it gotten extra SSF files in there. And so when it migrated, it migrated essentially the wrong name. It got all confused. Well, that was a very unusual situation that we don't expect to happen. And they've built in some checks to try to catch it. But the developers can't catch everything that somebody might do by errors. There shouldn't ever be extra SSF files in there. How'd they get there? We don't know. Probably somebody dragged files accidentally or something. We don't know. But you know, things can happen. So if you not having all the data, you know, can be a problem. But but bottom line is if you do the migration and you realize, oh gee, we messed that up, what can you do? Undo the migration. Because you haven't changed what's on your computer. Okay? So, you know, and this, this last thing is probably one of the easiest scenarios. If you don't have all the data from all the team members, okay, so you stop, you unmigrate, you know, you delete the eight project, you go get all the data from everybody, and then you remigrate it. Okay? Easy schmeasy. So no problem. Final issues. Update. Something Phil told, told you all today, it's just now updated. What's that? Um, www.paratext.org now takes you to the Paratext 8 website. Okay. Oh, really? So okay. If you really want to go to the Paratext 7 website, it's there. You, you look on the Paratext 8, eight website, site. and there'll be a link that says go to Paratext 7. Okay. So I was telling you go to Paratext pt8.paratext.org. You can just go to paratext.org and it'll get you to the same place. Okay? It's verified. Okay. okay. Thank you, Steve. Okay, so communicate, communicate, communicate. As a consultant, you might need to be working both in Paratext 7 and Paratext 8. So you need to do extra communication and you need to pay close attention to where you're working. Okay? You need to pay close attention to where you are. This is going to become an issue as we move down this road of... So you, could, you could sort of solve that a little bit if you resolve as a consultant to always begin to work in Paratext 8. If your team has not migrated, it won't show up and you'll say, oh yes, they're still in 7 and then you go to 7. So if you always start in 8, especially in that box, you would Right, but, uh, but at the same time, I would suggest that if you've moved a project to 8, if you've moved it to 8, if it's been moved to 8, whether you did it or you know, somebody moved it, if it's been moved to 8, if you still have that project on, of yours in 7, you should consider at some point early, you know, again, not necessarily the next day, but soon you should consider getting rid of that project off your 7. Okay, Back it up if you want to. But get rid of, and even, even for a consultant, well, making it uneditable, you can still write notes. So if a, as a consultant, you write notes. This is where it's probably more confusing for a consultant, because often a consultant's not editing. They're just writing notes. So, so you probably want early, you know, early on, once you're settled that this is now working in 8, you want to get rid of that project off your computer. Okay. You could still see it, but when you accidentally click it, it's yeah. When you actually click it, it's going to say you need to merge. Okay, can I migrate a resource? I really like the NET, and it's on my. Can I migrate that NET? You can't migrate resources if it's a real resource. Now again, if I've got 
if I've got the Hockle Tekel Bible on my computer that I'm using for myself, and I'm using it as a resource, I can migrate that, but it's a project. Okay? But if it's a resource, it's a, if it's defined as a resource, I cannot migrate it. Okay? I cannot migrate resources over to 8. So somebody says, oh, but I really like the, the NET. I really like the New Living that's on 7. I'm going to migrate it. You can't. You can't migrate resources. What about if you've made notes on a, in a resource? What happens to those notes? When you get out of 7, you're, they're gone. I mean, those notes, are, you can't migrate them. So if you were writing notes in a resource, they're just not there. This is where I would say, yeah, you put them in a consultant notes, not in a you notes. Know, okay. At some point after the migration, administrators should ensure that the team is no longer using Paratex 7. Okay. How can this be done? We've already talked about that. Okay. I would suggest that at some point you probably want to eliminate Paratex 7 from their computers completely. Okay. Whether, the, whether in the short run you just eliminate, you know, immediately eliminate the shortcuts so that they can't access it immediately, but eventually you want to get rid of the, the program on their computer so that they're not, there's no temptation to go and open 7. Okay. The temptation at this point would be that they want to look at some of the resources. At, right. And so, but you could, in that case, you could eliminate the projects. You could delete the projects and just leave the resources in 7 so that they could see those resources for the moment. And your notes would still be there, yeah. But for that reason, I wouldn't take off those resources. Yeah. That's up to you. If you aren't sure about migration, you can delete the project and even the registration and try it again. So if you've, if you've set up this project, but then you're, you're not really sure, you know, if you think something happened, you can delete it and start over again. Okay, not a problem. We saw that. We, you know, we saw how we we migrated it. We deleted it. Okay. You can import text from Paratext Seven, but the settings, history, notes are difficult, if not impossible, to import after the migration is done. So again, we've got the situation that if somebody accidentally kept working in Seven and actually made changes in 7, I can still import their text in. That's not a problem. But I can't import their notes and their history and all that. So that's going to be lost after we've migrated. Okay? I could still get the text, but I have to be careful that I don't then cause a conflict. If I've been editing in 8 and they're editing in 7 and I import their text, we're going to conflict probably. If we import, if we edit the same verse. Conflicts Conflicts occur when you edit the same verse. Communicate. Okay. Did I say communicate? Communicate. Communicate. I think we better give Phil a new name. The Paratex Marriage Council. Let's communicate. <laughs> if you guys aren't communicating, this is a problem. Okay. Okay. How do I handle associated projects? We, we've talked some about this. When you have an associated project, we're talking about projects like a back translation. And I'm not, at this point, when I'm saying it's an associated project, interlinear associated. Associa interlinear is not an associated project. Interlinear is something that's created by the process of, of work. But if I, let me close the NET, let me switch the NET to. Um, Right, dialect, an adaptation or something. So let me open the ZZ test. Okay, so if I create a project, I'm just going to call it My Project One. Isn't that an original name? MP1. When I create a project, one of my options is to create a back translation or a daughter translation or a translation. We're going to talk more about this later with projects. But if I create a back translation, I have to say what it's based on. In this case, it's based on this text. When I do that, I'm actually linking these two projects together. Okay. This is different from simply creating a, fi a project that I say is a back translation. Saying it's a back translation and making it a back translation are two different things. 
okay? Because I could come up here, I could come up here and say this is a standard translation, and I could edit this name and say this is the ZZ test 99 back translation. Okay? I've called it a back translation. So now I have this project, but it is not linked. There's no linkage down here where it's based on. So this is just a project. Okay? It's just a standard project. But if you link it, if you link it as a back translation or a daughter or something like that, then one, it does some special things. So if I were to create the book of John based on that, again, we'll talk about some of these things later. What it does is it gives me an ability to, to check that I've, I've done this back translation, it's right, and everything else. Okay, but what happens in Paratext 8? In Paratext 8, if I go to File, Open Projects, I have ZZB99. There's my translation. Okay, it already shows up. And if I try to open it, notice what it did. It just migrated it for me. It didn't even ask me because it was already registered. And if I'm trying to my, open it, it's just going to migrate it because it's linked. Okay, So it got its registration from the front, and it just migrated it over. I didn't re actually realize that was going to happen. I thought it was still going to ask me, Steve, did they change that? Is that, has that always been that way, that it just automatically migrated? Yeah, this is one of the challenges for those of us who are supporting this. We don't do this all the time. So I did not realize it was just going to jump over, but it did. I created it in 7. I created it in 7, and then I, I migrated it, and it just migrated. It was successfully migrated. Didn't ask me to migrate it. Yeah. Because it already knew that, that the other project was an 8, and so it, it did the migration. Okay, so what's going to happen, so the question, the question was what happens with associated projects? Okay, um, one, it sort of depends on the association, okay, because the associations are a little bit different. But in this case, with the back translation, it just migrated it. In 7, it will not ask me anything about it. In seven, it, in 7, when I'm in 7, it'll never ask me anything about it, because 7 doesn't know anything about migration. But, but if, you, if you migrated the associate, the front, the front. and then you go, uh, I haven't done this one, so I open it in 7, will it? No. Seven, 7 does not know anything about what I've done. So if I migrate a project to 8, and then I go back to 7, 7 doesn't know I migrated it. Because 8 knew that I'd migrated the front. But if 8 knows that you've migrated the front, and you open the, the, back, tra the back translation in 7, it knows that it's, 8 knows that that's linked now to the front one that's already migrated. Why wouldn't it do that? 8 doesn't know what's happening over in 7, though. Yeah, it does know what's happening in 7, but... but but when I went to 8, when I went to 8 and I tried to open this, paratech, this 7 project, it's a back translation, it just migrated it. It didn't ask if, didn't ask if I wanted to migrate it. It just, I was in 8. I was clicking 8. I was clicking in 8 and opening. And so normally, for a front translation, it would say, do you want to migrate this now? But here, because it was associated, it, at least it appeared that it did it. Now, what might have happened is I might have actually clicked three times and sometimes it remembers the click, and so it might have considered that I clicked on migrate now. I, I'm not 100% sure on that. Okay.
What if I need to change the name of a project or some other feature? Again, we talked about that you could use convert project. You could just create a new project and then import data and you can, there's some other things that can happen there. Um, that is the end of my slides. So that leaves me three minutes for any last burning questions that you might have. No, no, that's not necessary at all. That's not necessary at all. Okay, you just, you just lost all the points you got earlier, Larry. This, just, that just wiped out the slate, sorry. Just wiped the slate. Yes, again, communicate. And, and this is going to be really important. We need to communicate throughout this, throughout this process. I, thank you, Larry. Thank you. All right. Thank you all. Tomorrow we will be looking at the, at the project plan and, um, and the assignments in progress, and we're going to spend time actually going through some of the details of how to um, set that up so that it's productive for us and, and how to make adjustments and changes to that. And um, hopefully that will be a really fun time as we dig into the plan. Y'all have a good evening. We'll see you tomorrow.